as you can see behind me, the San Francisco Bay Area is riddled with earthquake faults. Any of these faults can rupture, but the most serious ones are the San Andreas and the Hayward faults because historically they have generated such large earthquakes. And now that the San Francisco Bay Area is so populated, and because so many of the homes are, you know, fairly old, before modern building codes protected them, the potential for your home being damaged are quite high unless you seismic retrofit your home. It is expected that the damage to homes will be in the billions of dollars and the homelessness or the displaced people will also be in the hundreds of thousands. And let me tell you uh, what that's like. When I worked for FEMA, I used to meet people, look at their homes, and it was a terrible inconvenience. Many of them had to leave the state. Uh, the hotels and other places you could stay temporarily jacked their prices way up, so paying a fortune. And then many people had to wait a year or more before they could fix their homes because it was um, the contractors were just impossible to find and they just charged so much to you know, fix these homes back up that uh, they couldn't afford it. So anyway, in order to avoid all that, we hope that a seismic retrofit done by our, country, our, con our company will avoid all that. This is a shaking intensity simulation for when the San Andreas Fault ruptures. Right here, that is the uh, epicenter, and that's where the fault is locked up. And the dark, the darkness represents the shaking intensity. The darker it is, the greater the intensity. And as you can see, the shaking intensity is gonna be pretty great going all the way down to the uh, down to the down the peninsula, down into Palo Alto, to Sunnyvale, Cupertino, and down into San Jose. And then also on the other side of the bay, in the East Bay, we're also gonna have the exact same thing in Hayward, Oakland, Berkeley. Uh, all the way extending up into Livermore and Concord. It's going to go all over the place. So there will be a lot of damage to homes in these areas. So here's a close-up view of the same shaking intensity map. As you can see up here, the earthquake starts in San Francisco and it's radiating out this way. Remember, the darker the red, the greater the shaking intensity. So it's going to extend over here up into Sunnyvale, Sunnyvale area, Cupertino, down through Palo Alto, and also over here into uh, a lot of shaking is going to happen right here in uh, the San Jose area. And there will be a lot of damage to homes in, that, uh, in these areas. The Hayward Fault is a crack in the Earth's crust up to 20 miles deep that stretches roughly 40 miles from San Pablo Bay in the north to Fremont and Milpitas at its southernmost end. It is constantly moving, little amounts every year. The problem is it's not moving enough. And so uh, we still have big earthquakes on the Hayward Fault to make up the difference. I'm walking along the Hayward Fault and here is the offset caused by the fault on this curb. Jim Kemper is a geophysicist with the U.S. Geological Survey in Menlo Park. His specialty is paleoseismology, which means that he studies ancient earthquake ruptures. Kemper and others on the USGS team dig trenches across earthquake faults. Peering into tectonic time, they find evidence of fossil earthquakes, which they radiocarbon date to determine the magnitudes and dates. Along the Hayward Fault, we have evidence for 12 earthquakes in a single trench. The most interesting thing we have found is, is that uh, the rate of earthquakes has been fairly regular over the last 2,000 years. Not only is it regular, it's due. Their data has shown that a major quake on the Hayward Fault has occurred roughly every 140 years for the last 2,000 years. And guess what? 2008 marks the 140th year anniversary of the 1868 Hayward earthquake. Probably the most dangerous fault in the United States is the Hayward Fault right here in the Bay Area. And that's because it has the potential for very large earthquakes and it runs right through a very built up area. And when it goes off, the lives of 7 million people who live and work in the Bay Area will change in a matter of seconds. It's something many residents would rather not think about. 
Zobag estimates the number of deaths in the thousands. Most people in the urban parts of the Bay Area live in homes built prior to modern building codes. And they could collapse. They could collapse, particularly the homes that are built over open garages, and, and many deaths will occur. As many experts have said, older single-family homes built over garages may be the worst problem in a big quake, leaving thousands of people homeless, perhaps unnecessarily so. It's an absolutely horrible problem. I see uh, Hurricane Katrina repeating itself here in the San Francisco Bay Area. I, I, I see houses that I can look at from the outside and I can say this house is going to fall down. I, I know that. Howard Cook, a contractor specializing in retrofits, has inspected hundreds of Bay Area homes. Homeowner Jay Tibbetts asked Cook to check out his house on Twin Peaks. This is the edge of your floor right here, okay. your house. And if you look, there's nothing um, really supporting it for back and forth motions like this except air. Cook says California's building codes for homes barely address retrofitting and that many contractors don't have the training he does to protect homes. When the floor starts to rock back and forth like that, we're going to hold it right here. And if okay. we hold it right here, the whole front's not going to move. Okay. So you're really lucky. Most houses in San Francisco are not like this. Okay. Most Still, houses... Cook says it will cost Tibbetts about $10,000 to retrofit his home. It's a complacency that we served the thinking about 06 and the city survived and it went on and what a beauty she is now. That was a horrible, devastating event. P thousands of people were killed. 225,000 people were left homeless. Half the city was gone. Uh, we, th we don't really look at it from that perspective, and people need to remember that was a horrible, horrible, catastrophic event, and that could happen again. Protecting your house is possible, if you know how. Howard Cook, owner of Bay Area Retrofit in Berkeley, is trying to avert at least some of this devastation by preaching the benefits of strengthening your home. And he's converting the masses, one foundation at a time. I'm going to explain what a cripple wall is. And if you mind, here's the foundation of this house. The floor is up here. And in between, there's a wall. And these walls collapse in earthquakes. Imagine this is the floor of the house, probably weighs 80,000 pounds. And when it shakes back and forth, this cripple wall will collapse and the house will fall from its foundation. So when you put the piece of plywood on, it can no longer move. This is very, very strong. The only thing is, once you put the piece of plywood on, this can still shake on, on the foundation and it can slide off. So you have to bolt the bottom of this to the, plywood, to the foundation. So as you can see, the floor of the house can still slide on top of the cripple wall. So what you do is you take a piece of steel and you attach the floor framing to the top of the cripple wall so now it can't remove. This is a complete retrofit. Probably 25% of the houses in the East Bay have been retrofitted and I would guess that 95% have been done incorrectly. For 15 years, Cook has lobbied local building departments and city governments to establish better retrofitting standards. There are no seismic retrofit codes that, that work. There are some guidelines but they don't apply to any of the houses we see. These old houses were built by Norwegians, by Spanish, by um, you, you know, different Europeans, and they're all done differently. And you just you have to understand how it works, and you have to know what to do when you see it. This is a huge disaster. It's going to be the largest natural disaster in the history of the United States, and I can do something about it. Roadways will be shut down. So I think we can assume transportation networks will be completely disrupted and destroyed. Water will likely be shut down. There will be fires because gas lines will rupture. There won't be enough water to fight the fire. Power will be down. Communications will be down. And if that's not enough to get your attention, recent findings by the USGS indicate the Hayward Fault may connect with the Calaveras Fault, which runs east of downtown San Jose. The maximum earthquake we could have if the entire Hayward Fault ruptured is about magnitude 7.1 but then if you add an earthquake that would continue on to the Calaveras fault you could get a substantially larger earthquake maybe about 7.4 which would have devastating impact across the region
This is a graph that shows the intervals between large earthquakes on the Hayward Fault. So right here, there's 155 years between the 1315 and the 1470 earthquake, 160 years between the 1470 and 1630 earthquake, etc. Now, as you can see, it's been 140 years since the last major earthquake in 1868. And when this uh, graph was made, uh, that was 11 years ago. So right now we're at 151 years. So we've exceeded the 95 year mark, the 143 year mark, and we've almost reached the 155 year mark. So that should really warn us that, you know, look, in six years, we're gonna be at the 160 year mark, which is the longest span of time between large earthquakes on the Hayward Fault. So most certainly from the geological I'd like to talk a little bit about my own experience with big earthquakes. I was in a very large earthquake in Ferndale, California in 1992, as well as the 1989 earthquake, but that was uh, some distance away, so I didn't feel it so intensely. But anyway, in the images behind me, you can see these are the sort of, this is the sort of damage that I experienced in my own house. Everything comes falling off the, off the walls, everything comes falling out of the cabinets, and you know, as you can see right here, it's a real mess. So one of the things that uh, my wife and I did after the earthquake, you know, we were able to get back in, it didn't look like anything was life-threatening, and we went and put everything back on in the shelves, put everything back on the wall, and, you know, we just felt, well, we, we saved what we had, what was left, and then the aftershock hit. And so everything came out of the shelves again, off the walls again, everything we tried to save uh, so it wouldn't break just fell all over again and was broken. So my advice now is that after the earthquake, take anything that's valuable and put it on the ground. The, whatever you felt at that time, the, the, could have been a foreshock for an even larger earthquake. So you need to be very careful about this. And also on the other image that you can see right here, be very careful about having bookcases and other large opposite objects that can fall on your head or the heads of your children, because you can see uh, you could be injured fairly easily. I hope this video helps you make a decision about retrofitting your home. Uh, I would like to point out that retrofitting does work extremely well. There was an actual case study. In the 1989 earthquake, an architect, he owned two identical houses in the city of Santa Cruz, and one of them he retrofitted. And before he could retrofit the other one, the earthquake uh, happened. And what you know, the the one house that had been retrofitted, uh, very little happened. The you know cracks in the plaster, sort of the usual thing that you would expect, um, you know, in a, in an earthquake, if they stay in the foundation. But the other one fell off its foundation and had a quarter of a million dollars in damage. This is very well documented. It's in a very prestigious uh, technical manual, uh, and um, anyway, it really does work. We publish new videos all the time, and if you'd like to be told about them, please subscribe. If you have any questions about your own home, feel free to email me at howard at bayarearetrofit.com. And if you have any comments on this video, uh, I will respond.